Uh, g'day. Right, so uh, these guys, this is a retreat. It's, I think it's like a 2014 retreat. Um, these guys came to us after doing some research on whether they were going to upgrade to a new van or do a power system upgrade in their van. So they actually decided to keep their existing van because what they found is that they were, first of all, very happy with their van. Second of all, it was going to be an expensive exercise to upgrade to a new van and they felt that they weren't really getting anything different than what they already had. Um, so the layout of the van, they like their wood grain cupboards. Um, so they are super happy with all of that sort of stuff. So what they've done is decided to uh, bring the power system up to um, quite a big system, uh, but upgrade a few other bits and pieces to make it a little bit more modern in terms of um, the appliances that they've got. So uh, when we first started talking to them, we obviously started talking about the power system, what they had. So they had a couple of AGM batteries, just a battery charger and a couple of solar panels on the roof. So we talked about energy usage and what they were planning on doing. They said that they would like to run their air conditioner off grid so um, we had a bit of a conversation because of the age of the van that the air conditioner itself um, was very inefficient so it was one of the original ibis uh, air command ibis air conditioners so what we did then is started talking about what could be done with the air conditioner you know soft starter or replacement and these guys decided to go for a replacement. So in this van, we've actually replaced the air conditioner with a Dometic Fresh Jet, um, and it's the um, 3400 uh, unit, which is I think called the Pro, Dometic Fresh Jet 7 Pro. Um, so what we found with these air conditioners is they're uh, very efficient when running in an economical mode. So not so much no different to an air con any other type of air conditioner when they're running hard, they still use lots of energy, but when they're actually cycling down to maintain or you run them in night mode or whatever, they actually are super efficient. So the other benefit to these as well is that they have a smaller footprint on the roof. So they create less shade for solar, create more space on the roof for solar panels and create less shade. So they're a really good option for um, larger solar arrays on the roof of vans. So moving over to the battery system, what we actually did was go for a 620 amp hour battery with a 3000 watt inverter. Um, and we've gone for 1200 watts of solar on the roof. And as always, we've given them the ability to plug in their portables, which is an Anderson plug down on the side of the van which goes through the DC DC charger. So they've got effectively three solar panels. They've got three solar panels per um, per solar regulator, three solar regulators, uh, which one of those is actually the DC DC charger for their portables. We also put in a monitoring package. We use a Simarine monitoring package, uh, which gives them the ability to monitor all of the um, ins and outs. Um, which we've mounted up here in the overhead cupboard with the inverter remote, as you can see. And on top of that, um, some of you might see here that they've got Starlink. And uh, so um, they ordered Starlink and asked me to set it up for them. So what we've done with that is we've put the router up here in the overhead cupboard. Um, we've run Starlink dishy cable out to a pass-through on the outside of the van and we've mounted a um, Space Tech pole on the rear of the van, which is a removable pole. It's just got some cleats that remain on the van um, So they all they need to do is basically get the pole out put Starlink dishy on run the cable out to the pass-through plug it in turn the inverter on done so we actually have it running at the moment um, 
I'm actually connected to their uh, wireless. So you can see here, they've got their Starlink online. You can run a speed test. As you can see, it's pretty fast, which is amazing. So this is a really good example of a van that, as we talk about, you go through the process of trying to work out whether you want to replace your van for a particular reason or whether you are very happy with your van um, and you just want to modernize it a little bit and make it a little bit more user-friendly off-grid. So, um, again, what we sometimes find with people that go and decide to replace their van and buy a van with an off-grid system already built into their van is that they then come to us anyway and get an adjustment made to the system or an increase in solar or an increase in battery or inverter size or something isn't connected to the inverter or whatever. There's lots of things that happen. Just sometimes it doesn't work as it should because the cabling hasn't been done properly. There's lots of things. So it's a it's a conversation that we have regularly with people. It's certainly something that we definitely recommend that you go and speak to um, a specialist, not the caravan manufacturer um, or the dealer that they're buying through. Um, in our opinion, there aren't too many people in the caravanning industry that actually know in detail about an off-grid system like this. Um, a lot of it's just guesswork for them. We actually do calculations based on load usage. Like this van now has the ability to run the air conditioner and run their hot water system off their battery, um, you know, depending upon sunlight, that sort of thing. And they also can run their three-way fridge off their battery. Um, the likelihood is though that they will replace that fridge with a compressor fridge at some point in time but at this point in time um, they can run their three-way fridge off their battery which if you've had a three-way fridge in the past you'll know that running it on 240 volt uh, has a much better outcome than running it on 12 volt from the vehicle um, they just don't work as well on 12 volt so it is a good thing to be able to do. It also saves you gas. One of the other conversations that we have with people a lot is how much weight do these systems add to the van? Um, it depends, basically it depends what was there uh, and it depends on how you're going to use it. But if you have an AGM system, those batteries weigh about 30 kilos each conservatively. So you're taking two 30 kilo batteries out and you're putting, if you're going for a 600, you're basically putting 60 kilos of battery back in. So they, they balance each other out. Obviously, if you're putting more solar on the roof, that weighs more. So you're looking at about 10 kilos per solar panel. Um, but the offset of that is that you can use less gas. So you might decide, for example, that you might take a gas bottle off the front of your van and not use as much gas so you can start cooking with electricity with induction cooker or you know electric barbecue if you want to go down that pathway as well air fryer, air fryer absolutely um, so you can actually take a gas bottle off the front of the van or you can reduce the size of your gas bottles to four kilo bottles instead of two nine kilo bottles so yeah there's lots of options from a weight perspective as well so I think that probably covers enough at this point in time. Um, Trying to just show us the system just quickly? Yeah, sure. So we've gone, as I say, for a 600 amp hour battery, it is fully compliant to the standard. We have it enclosed and vented, so it doesn't end, the gas can't enter the habitable space should it, something go wrong. Battery isolator, battery monitor, all compliant to the standard over here. Um, over the other side, on the other side of the cafe lounge, we've got our inverter, solar regulators, uh, DC DC charger, fusing, solar isolation, and solar fusing as well. And that separates the two 
uh, sides of the seat out. We've obviously got venting in for the chargers and the inverter. I had to increase the size of the switchboard to account for the additional cabling that needs to be run in there. Um, so obviously being a sparky can do that. We can probably go out and quickly have a look at the Starlink side of things. Let's do that. So the inverter control and the timer radio is up there. So as you can see, we've got um, our external pole, telescopic pole with dishy mounted to the top. We've got a um, waterproof uh, pass-through, which we've re-terminated the cable for the client, and that now runs up to the other the other half of that cable runs up to the bottom of the router. So basically, the client um, isolates off. Uh, turns a power point off uh, for the router, comes out here, undoes that, removes the pole, packs it all away nice and neat when they travel. Super easy, can't get run over. All right guys, we'll see you in the next one.